Well, I'm Jessa. Thank you for being here. I drove up from New Orleans today to talk about this medicine, and I believe at the end of January, I'm going to be coming back and offering combo ceremonies, which we can do in groups or we can do individual sessions. I normally do um, prefer to do individual sessions. I serve combo every Tuesday and Thursday in New Orleans and Sunday for those that can't make it during the weekdays. Um, you'll see in the back table over here, I've got a setup. A lot of the products over there are, I've got rape, um, I've got some ceremonial blend that I make and a plain, simple rape. And then I've also got some tepes or crepes, uh, which are self-administering for rape. If any, is everybody familiar with rape and what it is? Okay. So there's a huge variety of rapes back there. If anybody would like to purchase anything, let me know. I'll explain a little bit of rape. Um, and then there's also some trinkets, uh, jewelry and dream catchers from the tribe in the Amazon jungle in Ecuador that I work with, uh, the Sachawasi community. And on their products, everything that you see that's, they're made out of every single portion of it comes directly out of the Amazon. And it's collected, like mostly they collect the feathers. There's very few animals that are harmed. If they ever do harm macaws or anything like that, they eat them or use them in a ceremonial practice. So, um, so it's as ethically sourced as you can get and it's as direct from the source as you can get. Uh, but let me know if you have any questions about that stuff. The money from that also goes directly back to the tribe. There's no middleman except for me. And I use the money that I make off of that to make my return trips to Ecuador. So you support me in my education and you also support the tribe. So thank you for being here. Um, rape, let's talk about rape first. Rape is considered a shamanic snuff. It's one of the sacred medicines. It's one of the easiest to work with on your own. Um, one of the few that we do recommend working with on your own, aside from Sananga. Uh, but rape is made typically with uh, hardwood ash and it's made with tobacco and different Rapes will have different plants in them. Every tribe's got their own lineage, their own recipes, their own ways of making them. But it's grounded into a fine powder. Usually when I administer rape, I will say a prayer over you to call in the elements. So it's ayere, tierra, fuego, espiritu, corazón. So air, earth, fire, heart, and spirit, or spirit and heart. Um, just to call in those elements for you to be with. But rape is considered one of the fire medicines. And it sometimes gets used in combo. So it's a good thing to introduce to you. Uh, when I learned how to serve combo, I would always administer rape before beginning. And the farther I've gone and the more I've learned, I've learned to save it for those times if somebody can't purge and they feel like they need to or they want to, in the middle of the session, sometimes I will offer rape. So how many, is anybody here sat with combo before? Has anybody witnessed combo happening before? Do we know anything about combo? Okay, <laughs> a little bit. Combo is one of my favorite medicines and I work with many, many different medicines. Um, it comes from the Amazon jungle. It, the medicine itself comes from the Philomedusa bicolor frog. It is the only frog in the world that does not jump. And it is also the largest frog in the world. And the way that they get the collect the medicine, and this is a combo stick. This is how I get it. That's what it looks like. And I've got the altar set up up here. This is typically when you come to receive combo, this is what you'll see laid out. So the way that they collect the medicine is they call to the frog. The tribes go out into the, the jungle and they call to the frog. And the frogs will come down from the upper canopy and they will collect the frogs and they can't touch them because the moment that they lay hands on the frog, it starts excreting its venom. So typically what they'll do is they'll take a little knife or a saw and they'll cut the branch that the frog is on and carry it over to four stakes that are placed in the ground. Hi, come on in. Welcome. So they'll carry the frog over to where these four bamboo stakes are staked out and they'll wrap vines on each of its four legs and string it out. And it looks kind of like a giant, not a little bit of giant frog hammock. And they'll do either tickle its toes or they'll blow smoke in its face or they'll put bamboo straws in its nose enough to make it excrete the venom. Then they'll scrape the venom with a piece of bamboo or another stick and collect it and wipe it onto the stick that you see here. And they hang those above the fire to dry the medicine. Uh, the medicine that I use, the medicine that 
I serve is directly from Amazon. It's from the Sachawasi community, which is one of the tribes that I work with in Ecuador. And they go at Jesus and you two actually go into the jungle to collect the medicine. And they have a very special relationship with each of these frogs. Um, after the medicine is collected also, the frog is released back into the jungle. And they only collect from each of the frogs every six weeks at the most, just to give it time to regenerate. And they've had compo frogs in captivity before, but they do not produce the same excretion. There's something about the diet, something about the environment that allows them to, to produce what this is. A compo has been used as long as they know. There's no record of the first administration, but there's lots of legends about how they discovered it. And the theory behind or the stories behind it from the tribes and every tribe, in, whether you're in Peru or whether you're in Colombia or Ecuador, but everywhere in the Amazon, the tribes all use this medicine and they all use it in the same way. The story of it goes, there was a medicine man of a tribe and his people were sick and they were dying. And everything he tried, nothing was working to save his people. So he went into the jungle, into the deep jungle, and he drank ayahuasca. And he was sitting with the medicine, and he saw this beautiful maiden in this mist of this waterfall. And he said to her, he said, I need something to save my people. I need the strongest animal in the Amazon, like the strongest animal. And he's thinking crocodile, anaconda, jaguar. And the, the beautiful maiden in the mist puts her hand forward and shows him a frog. And he says, no, 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 no. I don't think you understood me. I need the most powerful animal in the jungle. And again, she shows him the image of the frog. And he started to begin to understand that this frog contained this awesome power. This frog is the only animal in the entire Amazon basin that has no predators, which is why it doesn't jump. It doesn't have a reason to. And anything like if a snake latches onto them, they immediately let go because this is excreted into their mouth. The frogs are very, very special. Um, I have not met one yet. And one of these days I will travel back down to Ecuador and hopefully get the opportunity to go into the jungle with the tribe to secure the medicine myself. Um, so the way that the medicine is administered is that we burn what we call ports and we use a stick. This one, got several here, most of these are spent, but this one is bamboo and it's the same as a skewer that you would find in any kitchen store, you know, that you make kebabs with, to put on the grill. The ones I typically use are these and what these are is a vining rose and rose is one of the love plants. So I, I really prefer to work with a lot of the, the feminine natured love plants. But we burn small quartz, oops. Um, you can see one here. I actually last week had started coming down with something and I did a one dot administration on myself of combo to try to beat it before it's, you know, hit hard. Unfortunately, I think I waited one day longer than I should have before administering it. So I did get a little bit of an illness, but it's clearing out of my system a lot faster than I think it would have had I not done combo. So you, I mean, these are combo scars. I've got them quite a bit of them on my body because I've worked with this medicine quite a bit and love this medicine. So we burn the ports and I set a timer. You'll see the timer on the table and you have 10 minutes to drink three quarters of a liter of water is what I do. Um, some people will do half gallon to three quarters of a gallon. I only offer three quarters of a liter before you begin. And you must drink the water within 10 minutes. Your belly gets very full. Some people, it, it becomes very uncomfortable because no one's really used to drinking that much water that fast. But we like the water to be in your system. And within 10 minutes, your body starts to absorb the water. So I like to do it within a 10 minute increment so that your, your belly's full, the water's there. And the reason that I don't offer more water is because water is the only part of combo that is dangerous. It can cause hyponatremia, which is basically drowning from the inside out. It's where your, butt, your blood gets diluted and the electrolytes in your blood become diluted and you start to your system starts to break down from oxygen. So the water is the dangerous part. So I treat it very carefully and very cautiously during the process. Um, at some point I usually will offer more water if people feel like they're have more inside of them that they need to release. And it's, you know, I'm not a forceful healer. I have, you know, the woman I trained with was very forceful. You drink a half gallon during the process. You had to drink a half gallon and there was constantly water being put in your face to guzzle down. I do not do that. 
Um, I've been told I have a much more gentle process than most, um, but it still is very powerful. So why do we do this? That's a question that a lot of people ask is why combo? Like, what does it actually do for you? There's a lot of belief around combo that it is a detox and it detoxifies your system. What I've learned about combo is that the detoxifying process is only secondary to what combo is actually doing. Are there any medical professionals in here? Science, science nerds? So you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about here. So combo vaccine contains over 60 active peptides and it contains three replica peptides that are found nowhere else in nature aside from the combo vaccine. And everything you hear about peptides, you know, the fa this face cream has peptides, it's gonna make you look younger. Um, this, it's usually skincare products contain peptides and they're gonna do something miraculous for your body. Um, I have a really good friend named Abid, who I've met in Santa Fe, and he is a, was a part-time heart surgeon and painter when I met him. He now lives in Denver, Colorado, and he travels and does talks on the benefits of peptides in curing heart disease. But everything that they've learned about peptides, everything that we know in Western medicine about peptides comes from the combo vaccine and comes from research done on the combo vaccine. There was two times that this happened and they both happened congruently yet separately. There was a researcher and explorer from Britain and there was a researcher and explorer from North America that both traveled to the Amazon basin in 1963. So at the same time, but not together. And then again in 1986, same time, also not together. And they took samples from the tribe from the combo vaccine and sent it back to their laboratories, which is when the research on peptides began. So peptides, what are they? Because peptides are really important, but what are they? You know what peptides are? Fatty acid chains. Fatty acid chains, that's, that's it. So what they are is if you have your DNA strand, everybody knows what their DNA is, right? It's what makes us who we are. It carries our geno genomes, it carries our ancestry, it carries our family lineage, it carries everything that makes up every part of who we are. So we have our DNA, half of our DNA is our RNA. What makes up the RNA is amino acids or fatty acids. And in that you've got your protein molecules. In between each of those protein mo molecules is a peptide. So as we age, as we get sick, as we hold on to trauma, as we have you know, excruciating circumstances in our lives, our body starts to shed peptides. Our body starts to break down. And what combo does is that when it goes through your lymphatic system, which is why we burn the ports is so they can get into your blood. It goes through your lymphatic system, scans your body and anywhere that there's missing peptides, the combo vaccine has a peptide to replace it. And there's three active replica peptides. So anything that your body contains that the combo doesn't have to fill in, it has these mutating peptides that can go in and make a bridge to restore your DNA. I mean, I think that that's pretty cool, like restoring your body at a DNA level. So people that have liver problems, like somebody that might drink a lot and they've got liver problems, they're going to experience a lot of detox with combo. And it's not because the combo is cleaning it out. It's because the combo is going in and repairing the liver. It's repairing the places that we hold onto trauma so that everything that's being settled into there in the somatic experience can be pushed out. And when that gets pushed out, it comes out in a couple of different ways. Usually with combo, um, you'll experience a very large purge. And the first purge is always water. It's most of that water you drink up and it's an extraordinary waterfall. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very active and it's very forceful. No, no, with Rape. So what Rape does, and I didn't talk about this with the Rape, what Rape does is it opens your crown chakra on a spiritual level, and it also grounds you. So we used to serve Rape in the beginning so that you could focus on your intentions, because any time you approach the medicines, you want to have an intention in mind. So we would offer Rape so that you could really focus on your intentions and combo and what you want to get out of it, but not necessarily. But if people are in the middle of process with combo and they can't get the purge out or feel like they need help, I will offer a rape and it definitely helps you immediately. Like, if it's, if they feel like they're stuck or if they've got a lot of pain or if they're just like, they can't purge, I'll offer rape and it, it's always immediate. I've got lots of other tools and tricks for getting people to purge too. <laughs> yeah. We used to use, I used to use cigars with a uh, combo quite a bit because cigars also, it's the grandfather spirit. It carries the fire energy. Actually cigars are amazing because they carry all four elements. You've got the earth element, which is the tobacco itself. 
It's grown from Pashamama. It contains some tobacco leaves. You've got the air element, which is your breath, the inhalation and exhalation of smoke. It has the water element, which is your spit, which um, if you're working a shamanic practice, when you spit, you feed Mariri is a entity that is considered to live in the throat of a healer or a shaman. I don't like the word shaman. I think a lot of people are triggered by it, but so it lives in the throat of the shaman and it's fed with tobacco. When they spit, Mariri is released and it goes, this entity or spirit goes and pulls these darts of darkness or bad energy out of others. So cigars contain the water element from the spit and it also contains the fire element because of course it's on fire. So cigars are very, very powerful in this realm and this work. And it also with smoke, anytime you're using smoke around an altar or if you're using it around a healing practice, the smoke helps to cleanse and purify. So we used to use cigar smoke a lot. And there was many people that if they couldn't purge, they would get cigar smoke blown directly into their mouths, into their face, into their water cup. Um, a few times we even had people chew on a chunk of cigar. It's never pretty. <laughs> Like I said, I'm a much more gentle practitioner than most. Um, the other secondary or second type of purge that you can experience with combo aside from throwing up, and also with combo when you do purge, when you have the, the vomiting purge, beautiful colors, you will puke rainbows. I mean, it comes out green, it comes out blue, it comes out black, it comes out brown. It's, and people are always trying to read the purge. They're like, what does it mean? What does it mean? Like, you know, I really don't know. And from my teachers, I've always said, don't read the purge. It doesn't mean anything, throw it out. But what we do believe in this practice is that it, all of that purge that's coming out, everything that you're letting go of is something that you're letting go of. It's either an emotional trauma, it's a stress trauma, it's something that your body has been holding on to. And to release it, it's, it's a very, very sweet release. The, so the second way that we purge is we have Southern purges. So you might end up in the bathroom. Um, I have had a couple of clients, I have one client that uh, every time, Every time that she's received combo from me, she's like, I can't purge. I can't purge. I want it out. I want it out. And she'll like stand from the chair and she'll lean over and it's both ends at the same time. So I, every time that she comes, I'm always reminding her, Hey, make sure you bring an extra pair of stretch pants. <laughs> Cause there has been twice where she's had to borrow something from my closet <laughs> to, in order to make it home. Um, lovely woman. And sometimes it even happens where you don't purge at all. And it's totally normal. And I think that people get really attached to the purge because they feel if something like dramatic isn't happening with their body, it's not working. But because we're not looking for the detox process, what we're looking for is for the peptides to be absorbed in your system. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't mean that you have nothing to let go of. It doesn't mean that you're less spiritual. It doesn't mean anything. It just means you didn't purge, right? Um, that's my train of thought. I have a question. Like yeah. In the, I know that you get five in your GT the same way through straight and frogs. Mm -mm. It's different. It's different. Okay. So the five MAO DMT that you're talking about comes from the Bufo oliveris toad. Oh, it's a toad. It's a toad, and it's a desert dweller. It lives in Sedona. It lives in Arizona. It lives in Mexico. It's why there's. It's quite common. Bufo. Right. Totally different. Is name completely yeah. different. And Bufo is smoked. Um, Bufo. There is. N there is no similarities at all like zero similarities bufo rips rips your spirit being out of your body and throws it in the face of god ayahuasca can be similar but it's also very different i can talk a little more about that too if you want I, I, okay it's okay. I could, I could talk about any of the medicines for hours. Like when Matt first asked me to do this, he's like, do you think you could talk about combo for half an hour? It's like, is that all you're going to give me? <laughs> I could talk about this medicine for hours. It's usually hard to shut me up. Um, and I talk about it all the time. I, I love combo. It's very near and dear to my heart. Um, so that that's the purging with combo. And usually after combo, you might feel drained. You might feel tired. Uh, when people come to receive with me, I always offer them a place on my lovely couch to lay down. Usually people will lay down for 20 to 30 minutes. And once they wake up, you either feel like you need to go back to bed. Um, I always recommend a high sugar snack, like bananas and strawberries, some type of fruit. I always make people throat comfort tea because I'm kind. <laughs> um, but yeah, typically after combo though, you'll have a, a huge surge of energy. 
and it stays with you for days, sometimes weeks. And that is the most common practice of why and how they use it with the tribes of the Amazon is they use it for energy, but they primarily use it for hunting. And one of the things that combo does is it, it takes away your scent, not your sense of smell, but your scent. And they use this snuff uh, called Nunu that is a combination of tobacco, like rape. It's a type of rape, but it's a combination of tobacco and coca leaf. So they, they roast the coca leaf, grind it down, combine the two together with the hardwood ash, and they blow it through a tepe. This is a tepe. This is how we administer rape. So it goes into, the sin goes into your nose, this end goes by my mouth, and it's a a blow. So it blows the tobacco product with a snuff in your nose. So they use this new new and they'll do administrations of it for like like 10 to 15 times back to back. Donna, I'm sure would really love this process. <laughs> So they'll do 10 to 15 administrations. And at that point, um, the Nunu will bring on a psychedelic experience. But what they, they report back and the reason that they do it is that they will make these packs, these bonds and packs with animals. And they'll get visions of a certain time of day and a certain part of the jungle and a certain animal. And they'll make these packs to meet there in order for the animal to sacrifice its life for the tribe. It's quite remarkable. So combo gives you more energy. And they'll, oh, and they'll administer combo. And if they're having like a really tough season when they, they aren't feeding their, their families, they're not feeding their community, they'll do combo for like five days in a row because it cleans you, it makes you faster, it gives you more energy and it takes away your scent. And through these visions, they'll make these agreements with the animals to show up and take the life to feed the families. Combo has a lot of fire in it, but I believe that combo is considered a water medicine. Yeah, there's debate on that. There's debate on. The beautiful thing about that, though, is if you have the fire and the water, fire and water is the source of all creation. So if you look at like forest fires burning down and the rains coming to rejuvenate the soil, sometimes seeds need fire to open. Um, it's the difference, but you know, it's the sun and the moon and the balance, the feminine and the masculine. And there's nothing that creation loves more than creation itself. So I, combo I consider to be a little bit of both, but primarily water. And with combo, um, I keep looking over here and losing my train of thought. I, I feel like I'm about to serve you. I probably should just not, not look at it at all. Um, yeah. So that's, that's combo in a nutshell. And I completely lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Yes. That was actually what I wanted to talk about. Thank you. So when you receive the combo, when the combo is put on, so you have 10 minutes to drink the water, you drink the water that burns. I usually burn the, the ports first so that when, as you're drinking the water, I don't have to go back and burn them. And I, at that time, I put a little drop of water on this stick itself to soften the medicine. So by the time you're, drink, you're done drinking your water, I can loosen it up and make like tiny, they're teeny tiny little micro balls, very small amount of medicine. And it, those go onto the ports. And then on top of that, I drip a little bit of water. And the water helps to activate the medicine. And within moments, it's usually within 30 to 45 seconds, you'll start to feel the medicine. And the first thing you'll feel is you'll feel an intense flush and like rise of heat in your head. Uh, one of my clients describes it as the same feeling as poppers. So I don't know if you're familiar with poppers. It's the thing you smell, you know, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a avid user. I don't think I've ever actually used a popper, but, but it is a thing. Um, but he, he likens it to that. I was like, okay, I'll trust you. If you have experience with that, I don't. So you'll feel this intense pressure in your head and you might start to feel like you're going to pass out. You might feel weak. Um, and then you'll start to feel that pressure and that heat and that flush. You get really hot and you start to feel that fire move through your body and you can feel it moving through your entire body. And at some point, usually about 10 to 12 minutes into the process, and I set a timer for 20 minutes, the medicine only stays on for 20 minutes. About 12 minutes in, you might start feeling like a tightening in your gut, and you might start feeling nauseous. And at that point, um, I always recommend people when they receive combo to sit in a chair with their feet on the floor and their hands planted on their knees to take root like a tree, to find your, your strength and your base here, because it does take strength to get through the process. And when you're ready to purge, lean forward, purge into the bucket. And as soon as you can, come back up to your, to your 
position of strength. And it's also, there's a saying that fear cannot live in a straight spine. So part of it is just keeping your chakras aligned and keeping that energy flowing through you. Um, another thing too, is if you lean over that bucket for too long, we get what we call beautiful frog face because it's going through your blood vessels, going through your, your lymphatic system. So your capillaries are dilated. And if you're leaning forward, all of that, that blood is going to rush to your face and you'll come up with big lips and a little bit of puffiness, which goes away within about 30 to 45 minutes after the process. So once you purge, um, you can always tell when the medicine's starting to leave you because people are more cognizant. People don't like to talk a lot. It's not that you can't. During a lot of ceremonies, you know, we, we say sacred silence. We don't want you talking, so we want you being introspective. Um, but with combo, you really can't. <laughs> like, I'll ask you questions, but typically you're not gonna want to talk about what your mother's making for Sunday dinner, you know? But it's, so it's, it's a very physical process. Very, very physical process. Once the medicine passes through your body, it's very common to see chill bumps raise on people. Um, you often get very cold. So being the nice shaman that I am, I'll bundle you up in a blanket <laughs> before I send you off to bed. So once the medicine comes off, we use something called dragon's blood. This is an amazing medicine. Has anybody heard of dragon's blood before? Most of us have seen this or heard about this in the form of incense and a resin that we put on coals to burn, right? Wonderful thing to do with dragon's blood. But dragon's blood itself has so many more uses. This one is actually from the Sachawasi community. I got it in Ecuador. And what it is, they take a knife and some kapal, and they go to the trees that the dragon blood comes from, and they bless the trees, and they ask permission from the trees to take its sap. And they'll put the knife into the tree, drain the sap, bottle it up, and now we have it here in Baton Rouge. So dragon's blood helps to, and that's what you see on my arm here. And dragon's blood uh, acts as like a secondary skin or a, a faux scab. So it dries into the ports once the medicine's removed and it seals it over. So it keeps it from, it keeps it clean. And it has um, like antibacterial properties in it too. Dragon's blood also, when I first went to Ecuador, the sun is so much more intense there because it's really high elevations. And I didn't realize I was getting a little bit of sunburn here. And Marlena came up to me and she's like, oh, oh. and she's just like, sangre de drago, sangre de drago. And she takes the dragon's blood and she pours it in her hand and she does it, she just like starts smoothing it all over my face. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but dragon's blood actually works really, really well for sunburn. It's incredible. It helps with all sorts of skin issues. Uh, dragon's blood also can be used if you have an upset stomach or indigestion, you can put a few drops of dragon's blood in your water and drink it and it's better than a Tums. So it's quite, it's quite remarkable. It's kind of like, I take dragon's blood as being almost like a cure-all down there. They use it for everything. It's everywhere and they use it for everything. It's like, oh, you're sick, take an aspirin. Like here, oh, you're sick, have some dragon's blood. Some of the other things you'll notice on the altar here, uh, I have Florida water here. Uh, this is a mixture of four different Florida waters, most of them from Ecuador. Um, but Florida water, what it does is it cleans and purifies. And like I was saying earlier, we use the smoke a lot of the time with altar work. And it's because we're attracting that good energy to the altar where we're sweetening the deal in a way. But Florida water works in the same way. It purifies spiritually and energetically, and it also sweetens it and invites in bless, blessings and spirit. So the Florida water, so usually once you have your first purge, I'll start working with the Florida water and start working with the Waida. And when you see the tools on the altar, they're on different sides. On one side, we have the masculine energy, and we always have the central medicine in the center. And on the other side, we have the feminine energy. And I've got a fan here. I work with fans a lot in the practice. Um, this one in particular, this is my cleansing fan. And anytime you have tools that you're working with in an energetic way, you never use your cleansing tools for your blessings. You always keep them separate. So it's like mopping your floors and then taking them off and rubbing on your skin. So we'll do a pure, like cleansing on um, either Paul or Paul Santo or Sage in the beginning. And then once you, before that purge comes, I'll be working on the fan, you know, to help move things along. This one is called a light up. Uh, this one was created by Monita Marlena uh, of the Sachuasi. And it is a particular plant that grows down there and it makes noise but it also is used for cleansing and for taking away energies. So you always get a blessing during your ceremony process. 
I've got my lovely little frog here that really upsets your stomach. So we always start the combo sessions with this. And one of the things I find that helps with a purge too, and we're talking about those other tools, is noise and music. Um, the Icaros are what are used most commonly, or Icaros, depends on which way, there's lots of different pronunciations. What the Icaros are considered to be, it is a channeling of the song of the sacred plants. So there's lots of words in Quechua, there's lots of words in Spanish that are used. Um, I have a few Icaros that I carry. I'm always working on getting more. Uh, so I will use some Icaros during my combo sessions. Um, but one thing that I was gifted from the medicine a long time ago was a whistle. And I've got a very particular whistle that is in my little handy dandy toolkit that I can pull out if people are really struggling to purge. 95% of the time, if I pull that whistle out and whistle at you, you're gonna let it go. It's quite remarkable. <laughs> So my training, um, and something else about music too, I feel like I need to say this, is that it's the only thing that transfers between this realm and the realm of the spirit world. It is the language of spirit. And all of our prayers, they don't go unheard, but if they can be carried on a tune, they are heard more directly. It's just something I've learned. So my training with combo, I started working with combo only two years ago. It's been a very fast and furious practice for me, very fast and furious training. Um, I first met these two traveling curanderos that live in Florida, but travel. And at a Mardi Gras party, I was at this event that I got seemingly random circumstances ended up at this event, was at this event found this tent that I went inside of. And this man walks up to me and he's like, smudging? And I was like, oh no, it's that kind of tent. I was like, sure, whatever. And I get smudged down and these two weirdos sitting next to me, the man looks at me and he goes, Mambi and Bill? I was like, what? And he goes, Mambi and Bill. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, okay. And he hands me this black tar paste, dips his finger in it. And like, he's like showing me like rub it on your gums. I'm like, okay, I put this, I was like, okay, this is intense. What mambe is, is it is a tobacco paste that has been brewed down so it's like tar and they add salt to it. And sometimes they'll add like figs or things to sweeten it, but it's tobacco based, it gets rubbed on your gums and, or that's ambial. So mambe is ground, roasted and ground coca leaf. And you take the powder of the mambe and you put it underneath your tongue and you allow your saliva to work to merge these two together to swallow it down slowly. So they offer me this thing and I get it in my mouth and I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. and the woman sitting next to me goes, oh, here, have some water. And she hands me a bottle of water. And I just take this water, not knowing what I was doing. And I just chug the entire thing. She's like, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there for a few minutes and the weirdo dude looks at me and he goes, how do you feel? And I said, well, I feel like I'm inside my body. And he's like, well, that's good. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I feel like I'm inside of my body. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I feel like I've been living out here for many years. And right now I feel like I'm in my body. And he goes, well, how does it feel? And I said, it feels like shit. It feels awful. And he goes, why? And I said, well, I feel like there's this black hole that starts here and it goes up to the back of my throat and it's just dark and I'm sad. And the strange little woman sitting next to me offered me a uh, smoking. And I was like, oh, okay, lady, I don't know what you're going to do, but let's do it. So she turns me towards her and she has this wida, which I now know what it is. She has this weird little broomstick and she's wh whipping me with this broomstick and blowing cigar smoke at me and chanting at me in Spanish. And the whole time I could hear her chanting in my mind in English. And I opened my eyes and I looked at her and I said, oh, her name is Zara. Because the question I kept hearing inside my mind was who caused you this much pain? And she goes, oh, hi, I'm Maria. I said, no, 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 you're Maria, I'm Jessa, her name is Zara. And she goes, oh, Zara Pita, your daughter. And I was like, okay, witch, like, what are, you, what are you doing to me? So we had a little bit of a discussion and she hands me this notebook and this pen, piece of paper and pen and she goes, give me your email. And she goes, I can heal you, Jessa, let me heal you. She's like, you ever work with plants? And I was like, yeah, of course I work with plants. I'm a witch and an herbalist. And she goes, okay, I work with different plants. Like, okay, all right, lady. So I gave her my email. A week later, I ended up in ceremony. And it was, I knew nothing about the medicines at that time. Like, absolutely nothing. 
And I ended up in ceremony, sat with them the next week. I flew to Orlando at the beginning of lockdown when you're not supposed to be flying anywhere and sat with her again. A week later, she was traveling through. I was sitting with her again and she goes to serve me rape and sananga at the same time. I'll talk about sananga in a bit because we do use that with the combo too. Um, but she offered me at the same time, like, you're out of your mind. And she's like, no, I do this because I love you. And I was like, okay, whatever. And she goes, I do this because I see you working with the medicines very soon. And my initial reaction was not a chance. No way. You're out of your mind. That is not for me. I'm not messing with this stuff. So after she said this to me, I started having very prophetic dreams. And I had these crazy dreams for about a week. And I saw her again. And I was like, all right, what did you mean? And she's like, you're going to work with the medicine soon. I said, then I need you to teach me. So she took me under her belt and I started traveling with her and was serve or assisting to serve and oftentimes consuming the medicine every week for about nine months, sometimes two to three times a week. So we traveled around together for a long time. After I parted ways with those two teachers, um, I met this teacher in Ecuador named Taita Alejandro, who works with the Sachawasi community, flew down to Ecuador, stayed for a month, went into the Amazon, met the community, got the blessing from Lamita Marlena, the one that made the Waida, to serve the medicine and started to learn more. And um, now I sit with, some of you guys had the mead when you came in, there's no more left. Sorry, Sorry if you missed it. <laughs> well, I will let Titan know. <laughs> yeah. The story of mead is, it's a whole other story. It's really remarkable. But, um, so I do sit with medicine every month, um, on the full moon with the ritual by myself so that I can cleanse and heal my own energy, my own heart so that I'm better prepared to serve others. So this mead came from the last full moon ritual where I made the mead based on the Amazon recipe and then had it on my altar as I was sitting with the medicine, left in a closet for a month and then shared it with you tonight. So many, many blessings. May it open your heart. <laughs> so, so I started studying with uh, Taita Alejandro. And now when I get my combo, my combo sticks come directly from the tribe. And um, I think that might be most of what you need to know about combo. <laughs> that, oh, there are counter indications with combo and there is some preparation. Some people that serve combo, they'll request you don't eat for up to 12 hours before combo. Once again, I am the nice one. I, I oftentimes will serve combo in the <clears throat> evenings and people usually come, like I said, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the most common days that I serve. So I ask you not to eat three to four hours before you eat. If you're coming for a later session, it's three to four hours. Anytime you do eat during the day, eat something easily digestible, eat something very light because you don't want your system being heavy. And the reason you don't want food in your system while you're undergoing the combo process is not because you're gonna be throwing up chunks. We always throw up chunks. It's not a big deal. The reason you don't want any, anything in your stomach is you don't want your body to be in the process of digestion. So you don't want those stomach acids active because when you go to purge, it can damage the soft tissues of your throat. So this is about restoring and taking care of your body. We don't want to damage your body at all. Um, some of the things are counterindicated with combo. Um, Ehlers-Danos disease or syndrome. Has anybody ever heard of that? It is one of the symptoms or the syndromes where your joints are super flexible. You have Ehlers-Danos? It's very mild, but my rheumatologist thinks that I do have it. Okay. Sorry, I have arthritis and he's like, you should not be able to Still, like in some of the ways that you've been, right? So, he thinks I have a mild case of it, like I've had the other sodas, yeah. Like, I stand there, my hip might like pop out, yeah. But it usually goes right back, yeah. I mean, it's like instant, it hasn't caused me problems, but I'm glad that you said that. Well, and the easier. reason why is because with Eller Sonos, there's also some issues with the blood and the capillaries, okay. like the walls are oftentimes thinner. So because this dilates the capillaries and forces blood to move so so quickly through your system, and it also drops your blood pressure. Okay. Like when that chill hits you at the end of combo, it's because your blood pressure is really low. Okay. So it's because of that element. So it's usually people that are like have a stronger case of it. Okay. But it is comes very very helpful for arthritis because it it fights inflammation. That's what Nora recommended. Yeah, so. it fights yeah. inflammation and it also um, has a similar component to morphine. Okay. So it has a painkiller 
in it as well. I mean, you like I have. Do you think it would still be safe for me to do since it? Do you have a case of it? It depends on how mild it is, but we can talk more in depth about it. And I could, that's something I also can reach out to my teacher and say, hey, okay. this is the you know this is what's going on with her, and I can get a very easy answer with you for you okay, in a yeah. couple of hours. Great. So, but yeah, I I have not worked with anybody with an extreme case of it, but I think it's more the extreme cases. Okay. One of the other things that's counterindicated is um, Parkinson's or any relative to Parkinson's. Um, it, it, those are pretty much the only two. And, a lot, and the only reason that comes up is because there's blood pressure issues most often with Parkinson's. So somebody, has low blood somebody with low blood pressure. If you have extremely extreme, like normal low blood pressure is fine. If you're medicated for low blood pressure, you cannot reserve com receive combo. They uh, recommend if you're nursing or pregnant, definitely if you're pregnant, no combo. I will not serve somebody that's pregnant um, because they actually can use as, use it in the community as an abortative. It can cause an abortion. So, but with nursing, I have served nursing mothers and it's not a risk of the contamination of the venom coming through the breast milk. In that case, I will also recommend if somebody's nursing a child, I will recommend to pump and dump at least the first round, just to make sure that it's out of your system. You're not going to transfer anything. It, there's no record of it ever transferring, but I'm cautious. But the reason why is that oftentimes when we're nursing, it can cause like, because the dilation of the capillaries, it can cause bleeding. So if you're prepared to have a heavier period or to start your period because you're already nursing, that can also be a trigger. That's one thing, but we want to be careful of, you know, we don't want to cause hemorrhaging. So I've left it usually if a mother is nursing, I'll leave it to the mother. If it's a newborn baby, I usually say no, just wait until it's at least six months out. Um, and that's kind of the only counterindications, but as far as preparation, there's no, like comp is one of the medicines you can receive, even if you're on SSRIs, there's no, like interaction between this medicine and any medication. A lot of the other medicines like we were talking about, the uh, Bufo, you cannot receive if you are in any type of, there's lots, there's, it, it's a monstrous list of uh, medications that can be very, very dangerous because it can cause serotonin uh, syndrome or toxicity, which can lead to paralysis, can lead to um, high fevers, can lead to death. So we're very careful about interactions. Um, yeah, there's even some things like with some of the other medicines, like St. John's wort is counterindicated. Chamomile is counterindicated. There's a lot of foods that you can't eat because of preparation. Combo, it has nothing to do with the food preparation because there's no MLIs in it. So it's not going to affect your system in the same way. But I don't recommend, like, don't go eat a hamburger and then come receive combo. It's not going to be comfortable. I know that as of about five years ago, it was specifically classified as non-psychoactive in the UK, which is not my experience of it. Um, and so what I've been miles, but I'm wondering is, yeah. are there now identified that mm -mm. sort of No. No, um, and I can talk about that too, because there is a huge spiritual element to combo, which is my favorite. And they actually consider combo to be the most spiritual of all the medicines. You might not be going on a huge journey, but what it's doing, it's doing the same thing that any of the other medicines are doing. It is cleaning out your system. It is getting rid of energies that you've been holding on to. It is opening your heart and it is setting you on a path of blessings aligned with your, your true spirit. So it's the most immediately effective spiritual cleansing that you can get. Um, so no, it is not psychedelic at all. If you're expecting like to be blasted out in the universe and, you know, sit face to face with your creator, this is not the medicine to do to do that. However, I have had many very deep processes that have led me into a much deeper spiritual understanding of myself and a lot of deep healing. Uh, I'll share a personal one with you is it was pretty early on on my training with combo and it was shortly after i got the blessing for combo i was like okay i'm gonna you know i got the blessing that weekend i'm gonna sit with combo as we close out this retreat and i received rape to set my intention and i was sitting with the rape and these images of my past just kept flashing before me it was like every moment that i'd ever been angry Every moment I'd ever been beaten, every moment I had ever been sad, every moment that those, those triggers were still lingering in my body. And suddenly I was in this meadow, this field with a very young version of myself. And I'd already been doing a lot of inner child work. So this child was there, her knee socks were straightened up, her dress was all smoothed out, her hair was combed. 
but she was still just kind of like, there was a sadness lingering with her. And I just kept looking at her and I was like, what can I do with you? What can I do for you? What do you need? And what came to me, the words came through me, let her shine. And I just, I said, just let her shine, let her shine. And so when I went into my combo session, that was what stuck with me was let her shine. And when I received the combo, I had what a whiteout is what we call it, where it's for me. And every time I've experienced it, it's been like this green or white, like blank canvas that's thrown up in front of me. And I, I even my eyes are open, I can't see anything but this whiteness. And so I saw her there and I just kept repeating, let her shine. And she sprouted wings and she was just floating and hovering above the ground. And it went to every single one of those traumatic moments. And I just kept saying, let her shine let her shine. And for me, it felt like I was going back and just giving permission to my old self to feel what I felt in those moments. I gave gratitude and, and thanks and appreciation for all the strength that that child had at that time to carry me through those moments and just really acknowledged everything that it took to be that person then to get me to where I'm at now. So yes, it can be a psychedelic experience, but that has nothing to do with anything that's in the medicine. That has more to do with how aligned you are with your heart and how willing you are to let go. Mm -hmm. And with all of the medicines, the most important thing about the medicine, any one of them that you're working with, it's about letting go. Because if we as human beings, as we, we hold on to things, right? We think we figured it out. We work in our minds. Humans are designed to work in their minds. So we figure things out. We know things. We hold on to things. We analyze things. With any of the medicines, it's really important to just let go. And just to give in, trust the medicine, trust the process. People that can't purge and they feel like they need to, it's because they're holding on. You just need to let go. And sometimes letting go can be the scariest thing that you're ever gonna face. It's terrifying. So, any other questions about combo? I offer it every Tuesday and Thursday. I do it by appointment and I can do group sessions. Um, I've talked to Sophia, Nora in Baton Rouge. We've been talking about, she's a good friend of mine. She actually was on our, our team that went to Ecuador and studies with Taj Alejandro as well. There was 16 of us that traveled down together to begin this year long um, journey. And it's actually really funny this, I'll tell you this too. Ecuador is the only country in the world that you have to be certified in order to serve ayahuasca. And it's the only country in the world that does certify you. So this year I went down and sat with the tribe, sat with the teacher, made a lot of medicines, but this, this training course I'm in is a whole year. And so every full moon I sit with ritual and talk to the teacher. And at the end of the year, I will travel back to Ecuador and I will get a very nice diploma that I can frame from shaman school. I will actually be a world certified Ecuadorian shaman. So I think it's pretty cute. I can't wait to frame it and hang it up and be like, proof, <laughs> I'm a shaman. Um, so Sophia is a good friend of mine. She lives in Baton Rouge. And she is part of, she's on her team as well of the, the folks that travel down. But I've been talking to her about coming up to Baton Rouge to offer a course where like maybe five to 10 to 15 people can come and we'll just do a big session. And then we were also talking to Matt towards the end of January, I believe. Yeah. Coming right up, in like right in here. So if you are interested here, please let us know. Yeah. Are you um, for, we can do as many as we want. Okay, we, we two bathrooms. Yeah, as long as there's two bathrooms. I prefer to do smaller groups. So if we're going to do a group setting, um, in no more than eight. Okay. So five to eight at a time. And we can rotate, you know, five to eight people in and out within like an hour and a half. Okay. So we can offer multiple sessions. Um, if you want to do individual sessions, we can set that up too. And if you have like a group of people that want to receive combo, I'm more than willing, as long as it's like four to five people, I can come up and serve combo. They do recommend combo because it's also what it's called is combo vaccine. So they do recommend a combo be received for what's considered a full, full dose three times within a moon cycle. So three times within like a 21 to 28 day period. So three sessions. Um, and what that does is it, it builds your immunity so that over the next, and that's good for a year. And I, I mean, I, I swear by it, even like, you know, I told you I started feeling a lot under weather this week. I just did a booster 
just one dot. Uh, for my initiation, I'll tell you guys about that too, because I was a little bit crazy. People are usually fascinated by this one, especially those who received combo. Um, for my initiation, I did what they call, you can see the scars here. It's called a three by three or a block session. So I burned nine ports and a lot of my training is serving myself. So I did have another friend of mine that also is a combo practitioner. She was with me, but just to hold space, just pick me up if I passed out because people can pass out on, on combo. Usually, if, you know, if I'm there with you, I'm going to like hold you up and talk to you or sing to you to get you to come back. Um, and you just wait for it to pass. So she was there just in case you don't want me hitting the floor. Um, but I burned the nine ports. I drank my water in 10 minutes. I applied three dots, processed that for 20 minutes, took it off, laid down for 20 minutes, got up, drank water for 10 minutes, put on six, processed that for 20 minutes, <laughs> laid down for 20 minutes, got up, drank water for 10 minutes, and then put on nine. So within, and I'll tell you exactly why I did this. It sounds insane. Within two and a half hours, I'd done 18 dots of combo. And the reason why I did it is because it works with the peptides and our body has receptors and we have peptide receptors. So those peptides enter in your system and your body's hungry for them. It's just like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Well, the second time you go in, they're a little more closed down because they're pretty full. You know, if you go to McDonald's, you're going to order a Big Mac when you're starving. The next time, if you're going to order two of them, the next one, you're not going to eat so fast because you're not so hungry. So by the third time that you're putting all of those peptides in your body, your receptors are pretty much shut down. And that is when you get to meet the spirit of the medicine. And the spirit of combo is very subtle. It is so gentle and it is so pleasant. It's like this, this incredible crystal clear connection with everything that belongs to this earth. You feel the energy inside of you. You feel the energy inside of everything else. And when I did it, when I had the third round on and I was sitting in my backyard, this giant flock, I mean, gigantic flock of birds came into my backyard and like landed in the trees and on top of like the bus and on the edge of my pool. And they just sat there and just stared at me. And I was just like, had this, this medicine on. I was just like, Oh, <laughs> It was, I just felt like yeah. I love animal impact. So like yeah. I'm so in tune with animals yeah. and nature and plants. Like, I do Reiki healing, but like I got into it because I want to deal with animals. And now I'm like, okay, I'll do people too. That's great. I I do I do a lot too. I I am one of the only people that gives dogs massages. Yes. I can't I don't just pet dogs, I I massage animals. Yes. I love it. Yes. It's funny you say that too, because it's something's been happening the last like six months, which I think is hilarious. And people, I don't, I didn't feel like my friends believed me. So every time this started happening, I started taking pictures and I'm like, see, 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 see. Ever since I've started serving combo, Don has actually witnessed this too. Um, ever since I started serving combo, I've had an astronomical amount of tree frogs showing up in my life and they don't just show up in my life. Like I came home from leading ceremony walked into my room, went to throw my pillow on my bed and a tree frog jumped off of my bed oh my gosh. onto my chest Aww. and I caught it and I went and showed my son and then like went and put it outside and let it go. I it was like two weeks ago, I had two of them in my living room. I caught one, put it outside and I turned around to go do something else. And there's another one hopping across the floor. So I grabbed that one, put it outside. Um, I was at a festival recently. I was in the porta potty that had just been sprayed out. And I walk into the porta potty and I'm sitting there and I look up and in one of the little divots of the porta potty is this bright green tree frog. I was serving a friend of mine at ceremony combo and she's like, can you go to the bathroom? So when we set up ceremony, we, I prefer to do it outside, very um, traditional style. But I have these um, beautiful bathroom structures that I designed and created, but they are tie dyed, they're ice dyed. So they look like little solar systems on the panels that drape around them. So I, I call them my portal potties. Nice. <laughs> and I set up candles and little altars so that when you're in the middle and deep in medicine, you go into this altar to release all of that energy you're holding on to. So I go in, um, I take this participant into the bathroom. She's like, I need to go to the bathroom. So I take her into the portal potty and I sit her on the seat and she's sitting there. I was like, Oh, you've got a friend. And she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, right next to you on. And I'm not joking on the leg of, the seat was this tree frog. It was like this big that looked like a leaf that was sitting there with her during her combo journey. But it's amazing. I, I think that it's a, like, I've got two theories. One is because of the energy. 
because it's it, the, I carry the spirit of combo. Yes, She's in my heart right, right. all the time. I think also I've had so much combo in my system that I now <laughs> exude the pheromones of a frog. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> You're just searching one of them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it is a very very spiritual um, practice as well, and oftentimes when I serve combo, I, not oftentimes every time when I serve combo there's something inside of me that opens up and my connection to the medicine is very strong. I usually can get a sensibility about what is stuck, why it's stuck and where it's coming from. I had somebody come to me one time for a combo, never had met this woman. And this, this happens frequently. I, usually my participants, my ceremony is leave with homework. I love to give homework. I love to hear the messages of what's coming through and to give people homework. It's great. They usually love it too. And it's not like, you know, essay homework. It's usually something beautiful, like go build a fairy house or leave an offering for your grandfather next to the tree or, you know, go feed the dots or sit your ass down and shut up, you know, <laughs> for five minutes. Um, so there was this woman that came in. It was a friend of a friend. I'd never met her. I'd served her combo and I just had this really strong connection. I was like, there was something in her body that was a triggered trauma from either a sporting accident or a car accident. It was stuck in her, her lower chakra and her root chakra. And it was a blockage that was preventing her from financial growth. And when I started talking to her after the session about her homework, I was like, this is what I need you to do to clear this. You know, I've got this little fire ritual for you and some camphor salts and like these other things. I want you to go and clear this with fire. And she's like, how did you know about this? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, three years ago, I was in a car accident that almost killed me. And it, it broke my lower lumbar mm -hmm. and I haven't been able to work since then. So it's quite amazing. Like it does work on this incredibly deep spiritual level because everything, 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 everything is energy, right? Yeah. We believe a lot of things that are real. There's a lot of things that aren't real, but it's all energy coming in and going out. It's all energy. So any other questions about combo? Yeah. I've been thinking about this this whole time. Trying to mentally prepare myself for <laughs> the idea of someone like burning a hole into me. Okay. You know, I'm sure you're used to the pain level by now. Can you describe like what it's like for somebody who's like? Oh, it's so like, funny. How many holes is like to That's size? that's a great question. Okay, and I'll talk about this too. Um, but it's not a hole. It's not a hole. Yeah. You're. I'm burning the first two layers, and people are terrified of the burn. When I. When I first received combo, when I first received combo, I knew nothing of combo, nothing. And I went to sit with the medicine and I was terrified of the burn. And I remember Jonah, a good friend of mine, and he's like my business partner and medicine brother. He's like, if that's what you're afraid of, you're thinking about the wrong thing. I had no idea what he meant. The burn is nothing. It's, it's not even as much pain as a tattoo. It's it's like a light little like pinch. It's it it's so quick. It's so small. No, people people ask me that all the time, and it's it really is just the first two layers of skin. It's such a shallow mark, and it, like you hear it more than you feel it. And that's what I always listen for is I hear that pop. So the question about how many dots do you do? There's no reason to ever do more than five. I've met a lot of people that are like, oh, I've done 18 dots. Like, and I did do this series of, but that was, it was a very different intention. Right. It was to meet the medicine and to really meet the spirit and the quality of the medicine. Um, but five dots, cause your body can only absorb so many peptides. And that's what we're after. We're after the peptides. When your body is flooded with peptides, it's only going to take what it can handle. And then this receptor is going to shut down. So even if you're doing 18 dots, you're not getting the benefit. Uh, and you might get a more dramatic purge, but you're not necessarily getting any more benefit with 18 dots. To me, it's just, I consider it a waste of medicine. Yeah. And this medicine is so strong, you usually don't want more than three. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. But I always listen to the medicine. My my teacher in Ecuador has a way of testing. And it's it's interesting. And I've started working with this practice, but it's not the one that I go to the most. Is that when he lights the can like I have a candle, the small candle here. So I'll light that and I'll use that candle to burn the stick. But once I light the stick, if you take that stick while it's on fire and you hold it close to the person, it depends on how long it burns, what their tolerance level is. If it puts itself out sooner, it means they have less tolerance. If it burns for a longer length of time, that they can receive more. So I started dappling in that, but I'm not quite connected with that practice. I usually just trust my intuition. 
And we'll talk a lot about it. Like, you know, we'll talk about it first. Like, what is it you're trying to heal? There's also a difference between the masculine energies and the feminine energies. So our feminine energy, our feminine side is our left side. It's the side that's closest to our heart. And this is our masculine side, masculine energies. And it's not the female, it's not girls and boys. It's feminine energy, and masculine energy, right? So masculine energies are the ones that are our foundations, our pillars. It's our strength. It's our physicality. It's our money. It's our survival, right? It's the foundation of everything that we build upon. Our feminine energies are our emotions. It's our ethereal gifts. It's the magic that we bring and we weave. So we need both. We need the strong foundation for our gifts to, to work upon. Otherwise it's like smoke at a breeze, you know? So we, we need them both. So oftentimes I'll say, you know, what is it you're trying to work on today? And if it's something more physical, like I've got this joint pain, I've got this pain, then, you know, we'll usually do masculine. If it's something like, oh, I'm have a disruption with my relationship with my mother, I can't stop crying. We'll, we'll do feminine. Do you just the No, not always. Usually, typically, yes. It depends on what I'm feeling is coming through because I do rely on intuition a lot. Um, typically it's the upper arm. If I'm doing myself, it's typically down here because it's, I can see it. I have several times have done what I call wings where we'll do dots here and then the spinal, spinal point. Um, sometimes it's just the dots here. There are some healers that will only do women on the leg because women's energy, the chi fall, flows up and men, it flows down. If you do anything below the waist, it takes a lot longer for the medicine to set in. So the process can actually be a little bit longer, still effective, but you might, you might not feel the effects of the medicine for like two to three minutes before it really like, because it all has to travel up into your, your head. Um, yeah. So I mean, you can pretty much do it anywhere. I 